Thank you so much, Simi. It's been how many years I've been trying to get you to come speak to my friends? <laughs> <laughs> several <laughs> several years yeah. so I'm, I'm very happy that um we were finally able to align uh, our timeline and uh, get this going thank you so much and i want to thank everyone around the call i want to thank all the friends of finance coach bk that have chosen to join us for this conversation i promise you the one hour there'll be no regrets you're going to enjoy spending your one uh your one hour with us now, today we're going to be talking about faith, family, and financial freedom. But before we get into the conversation, I like to always share with my friends and new, my existing friends and new friends, uh, that the essence of this community is for everyone to achieve financial freedom. Uh, financial freedom is the place you get to where your money begins to work for you, where you are not actively chasing money, but you're making passive income. There's a difference between active income and passive income. Active income, you wake up, you go to work, you run your business, you still have to do something actively to make money. But you see, we want to get to the place where money begins to work for us, where you can sit back and then you're just working for leisure. You're not working because you're mandated to work. And that's the place of financial freedom. Now, in this community, we say you have to be financially fit to achieve financial freedom. There are three things that we put on the table. I always say you have to, the, the model, the three things are under one model that I call the ESI model. So the E stands for earning more, whatever you're doing, whatever stage of life you're at, if you're yet to get to financial freedom, you must aim to earn from more than one source of income. And then you must also learn to save better. You, you're probably, some people are saving, some are not saving at all. But whatever you're doing, you must aim to save better because when you work actively for money, the only thing that you give to yourself is what you save up. Otherwise, every other thing you used to pay for your bills, you used to pay you know, your way and pay for bills. Uh, then the I stands for invest well. So we want to earn well. You know, we earn from multiple sources of income. And then we want to save better. And then we, do, we want to invest well. We don't want to make mistakes after working so hard for our money and you know, squeezing things, sacrificing a lot of you know, uh, pleasures to build up our savings. We want to make sure that when we build up the savings that we're actually investing right. And that's why the I is in that model. So everything we do in this community, I have um, some experts, I have finance experts that join me and work with me uh, to help members of this community to achieve financial fitness, achieve financial freedom, grow their wealth, create wealth, grow their wealth, and then retain the wealth. Because you don't just make the money and then leave it um, to go down the drain. So that's what I want to start with this evening. And I want to say to people also, no matter the stage of life that you're at, uh, you can achieve financial freedom and you can achieve financial fitness. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the Western world and you're overloaded with a lot of credit card uh, indebtedness or maybe you're, there's a lot of, you're under some mortgage weight or you're just owing and wish that you were not owing that much. You can always do things better. And there's no need to feel guilty if you're in, in debt anyway, because if you use debt well, you can actually even use it to create wealth. And so uh, I like to remind people around the call this evening that no matter, yes, thank you, thank you. No matter what state of life you are at, you can do things better and you can still achieve financial fitness. Now, uh, we use social media a lot these days. Uh, some of us is for entertainment. Uh, some of us is to catch up with people, you know, loved ones around the world. But one thing you can do with social media is to get, you know, financial education. You can, you know, schedule it mentally that every time or once a week or once a day, whatever time you go online, that you're seeking some sort of financial education and you will be doing yourself a lot of good uh, with that. So straight into introducing our guests and our, our special guest of the day, uh, Simi Sola Okai. Uh, just a very brief introduction. Simi is an author. Uh, she's a producer for the Christian Broadcasting Network program called Turning Point International. Simi is married to Sam and they have three sons. Simi was born in Nigeria where she lived for eight years before migrating to Australia with her family. In 1998, she moved to the USA where she now lives with her family. So and that's our, our topic for the day is faith, family, and financial freedom. So the questions I'll be putting to Simi this evening will border on faith, family, and financial freedom. 
the conversations that we bring to the um, to our, our audience and to members of this community, the conversation, the aim of every conversation is to do things better financially. But you see, there's so many aspects of building wealth. If you don't have a good family uh, support or you don't have a good family setup, you can build wealth and still be very unhappy. So these things come hand in hand. And uh, faith is also very important. Some, some people think that because uh, they're very religious, then they shouldn't uh, pursue uh, wealth creation or they don't understand how they should pursue wealth creation. We're gonna talk about all of that. And please put your questions in the box. The topic again is faith, family, and financial freedom. Please put your comments, contributions, or questions for Simi in the box. Uh, today, we're going to be very responsible, and we will keep this conversation within one hour. Hmm. Simi, welcome. Thank you so much, Coach. I'm honored to be on this platform. I really am. I'm a follower, and I learn a lot from it. So uh, thank you for inviting me on, on this platform. You're very welcome, Simi. I'm going to start with faith. And honestly, I do hope that many other invitees get to join this conversation before you, you tell us the, you know, the love story that I always like to hear from you. Uh, but let's start, let's start with faith. Can you share your personal journey of faith and how it's shaped your life? I know you're a faith person. Yes, faith uh, it's central to my life. My relationship with Jesus is the foundation of everything I do, everything I am. Um, you know, without him, I, I honestly, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have anything I have. So I think, um, you know, I came to know Christ. I've always had a really like a, a knowledge of God and who he is. And I was raised Christian in a Christian home. Um, but it was really when I became a teenager that it, God became real to me. Like, I realized that he's not just God over everyone, he's God over my life. And so when I gave him, uh, I asked Jesus into my heart to be Lord of my life and not just Lord of my soul, but of everything. You know, sometimes people say, you know, I believe in Jesus, but I'm like, if, if, if I really believe, I really want you to lead me in every area. Um, and so that includes, you know, who I marry, my job, uh, the everything, everything I am, you know, I, I look to him for that. He's he's my foundation. So, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's yes, you did, and thank you, thank you for sharing so uh, clearly. Uh, you know your journey with God, and I hear you say he's Lord of everything, not just a, a section or a, you know a part of your life. So you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior over everything. And that, that's, uh, I, I like that part. And I hope that people around the call uh, would also choose to make Jesus Christ Lord over everything. And we'll get yeah. to uh, our faith and money down the road. Because for some people, Jesus Christ is Lord. But when it comes to their money, then they're going to pack it. And integrity just <laughs> goes away. Yeah. Um, still, you know, it's... it's um, I know you don't live in Nigeria, uh, but we also hear, I hear loads of stories of challenges of, you know, different things happening, negative things happening that I can term challenging times. Now, for people in Nigeria, it's even more challenging because, you know, uh, the economy is very hard on everyone. Uh, so as a Christian, what, what would you say um, holds your faith up when times are very challenging? And don't worry that I use the you know illustration of you know uh, economic hardship in Nigeria and you know the scenario I try to paint about America. Let's just talk about challenging times generally. As a Christian, what helps you hold on to your faith? What do you do in challenging times? I love you know I go back to scripture. You know, um, is it John sixteen thirty three where Jesus said, "In this world, you will have trouble." Mm. So he's I already he's already shown us to expect it. It's nothing that ca catches him by surprise. It's right. like it will come like storms will come. And that's the thing. When I say that Jesus is my foundation, you know, what do you build your house on, on the rock or on the sand? So when the storm comes, can you still stand? Mm. So every time, you know, we I mean, it, it may seem like, oh, you know, you're on television. You don't, you know, 
all made up, everything is perfect. No, we go through storms mm -hmm. um, and, you know, financial storms in health storms, um, just so many things, but relationship storms. Always... <laughs> you said what? Relationship storms. Thank you. Young ones, yeah. Yes. Yes. There's this, I mean, storm is, it's like there's life, there's storm. It's just synonymous. But I think what Jesus says, take heart, I've overcome. So I just love that. I, I, I you know, I don't want to sound repetitive, but every situation, every problem I face, he said, cast your cares on me. So you start the day with Lord. <laughs> okay. I'm facing this help. What do I do? I need guidance. Um, you know, I need provision. He's provider. He's, uh, he's Holy spirit is my advisor, everything he is. So anything we face, um, you know, I know you may think like in the West, it's different. It's it's a different kind of storm, you know, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but and there are storms. There are storms. We serve the same God. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he's definitely my my go to the word of God. There's the answer. I say I yeah. hear you. So so uh, and I like that warning that because we're Christians does not mean that there won't be storms. Yeah. But one thing that will keep us going is that we know who can control the storms. Yes. And then every day, and I like that you see, as long as there's life, there will be challenges. Yeah. And thank you for hitting it on the, hitting it on the head, saying that even though there's a Western world and then there's Nigeria that I try to separate and say, oh, it's economic hardship, there are storms everywhere. But as yeah. long as you hold on to the anchor, and I hear you saying your word, your word, the word of God that will see you through. Yes, thank you, McDonald Cookie. I like your comments already. He says we serve the same God wherever. That's the right. The audience <laughs> joining us today from Nigeria. Some are joining us from Canada, and you are seated here in America. We serve the same God. Ah, I hope I can keep this within one hour. Some people are watching. Thank you, Simi. Quickly to the next one. And let's see how many people are around the corner. I hope they're lucky enough. All right, we have about you know 25 people around the call now. Yeah, you know I wouldn't talk to you, Simi, without talking about your, your love story. <laughs> and I try to send this invitation to you know some of my young friends, you know, because I want them to hear it. It's, I, I can speak about your story, I can say what I know about it, but it's more interesting coming uh, from your mouth. Uh, now I wanted to talk to us about um you know, finding love. I know you wrote your book. And by the way, Simi is an author and she's written two books. Uh, the first one is Waiting for the Ice Cream Man, How I Found True Love Through the Power of a Simple Prayer. And then the second book she's written is I Want to Be a Mommy When I Grow Up, Lessons of Faith and Hope. Uh, the question that I'm asking her, uh, I'm sure it's going to be like a tiny summary of the first book. Uh, but Simi, I want you to talk to my audience this evening about finding love across many oceans is that right How you... that is correct sorry so please feel free and tell us this story oh see that's when i said in the beginning you make jesus lord of everything i'm serious i'm i'm a firm believer that god is the author of romance like he is the author of your life story your love story your financial story whatever whatever word you want to put in there god is lord of it all. And he writes the best ones. And for wow. me, you know, when I gave my life to the Lord, um, as a teenager, I just felt that, um, God, I want you to pick who I will marry. Like, I don't want to have to pick myself. I was always the go-to person. My friends would come to for relationship advice and they'd be heartbroken that this happened and that happened. And in my head, I just thought, huh, I don't want to have to go through this. You know, God, how can you help me in this area? Like, I really want to trust you with it. Um, and, and it's really as simple as a prayer. You know, a lot of people ask, well, how did you find, ask him. I mean, if he made you, he created you. Don't you think he knows like who would be best for you? And I think a lot of people fail to ask. So I, I did that in faith. Um, I just said, God, please pick who I would marry. And, you know, a lot of times we ask and we think, you know, the next day, the next week, it, you know, of course it was. Uh, a 10 year wait for me, but it was really um, just trusting that God knew who I was. He knew my future and he was best able to do that. And so for me, you know, as the years went by, I was like, okay, God, where is he? 
you know, you're seeing your friends get married, have babies, all the things. Like, you're like, okay, when is my turn? And my story is actually had never had a boyfriend. My husband was my first boyfriend. So for those who think, oh, this doesn't happen anymore, like, it is true. I mean, you don't have to date 50 million people. And if you have, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I don't have, God has a story for each person, but that was just my story just waiting for the person God had for me. And would you know that um, he was in Nigeria? <laughs> of course, I'm Nigerian, but I, you know, we left when I was eight. And uh, to cut the long story short, we, I took a trip to uh, Nigeria to visit my parents uh, in Abuja. They were in Abuja at the time. And my ice cream man was the worship leader at the church. And so get this, my prayer was, I had a fleece. I don't know if you've all heard of Gideon. Okay. So yeah. he had a face and he, he wanted to know, God, is it you that is calling me, you know, to fight against, you know, all the enemies and things like that. And he said, I'll lay out a fleece. If the fleece is wet and the grass is dry, I'll know it's you. And then God did it. Then he said, if the fleece is dry and the grass is wet, God, it's you, God. So for me, I said, God, I just want you to confirm who will be by having him take me out for ice cream. That's just, that was like the desire of my heart. I just, simple, small, but see, God hears those prayers. And, you know, the whole story's in the book, so I'd love for you to read it. But long long story short, God did exactly that. He took me out for ice cream. Yeah, and for Abuja. my friends around the call, especially the unmarried ones, I'm going to be buying five of Simi's books for the first five people. Oh. And it's not just the, I had said they were going to get prizes for attending. But this is just a top up, top up on that. So the first unmarried people, and who knows before the end of the program, some of my senior friends around the call, we just add more copies and we may be able to get 10 copies for people. Uh, but see me, there's something um, that I want you um, to talk about. Um, I know you try to compress it because we don't have so much time. But um, years before you found your ice cream man, uh, I understand the relationship that you have with God, but there was this special, there was this intentionality on your part, because I remember uh, you had a session with um, my husband and I, and you were asking some questions, and you were still very far from your ice cream man at that time. So my point is, you were very, very intentional. Uh, and I do like, you know, what you said, you don't have to date 50 million people to find the right person. And some of my young friends around the call are already, you know, agreeing with you. Uh, there's a gentleman already who says that, yeah, the pe first person he dates is going to be the person he'll marry to. He says, Mrs. Simi, she's, she's Mrs. Okai, Simi Okai. Mrs. Simi, I agree with you on that. So yes, Simi, um, I want you to say something about intentionality, just shortly about, you know, especially when it comes to relationship matters. And thank you for, you know, sharing with us that, uh, you know, God is also the author of romance. Some, some people are already putting in there in the comment section. So just oh, some of you. Yes, he is. I think that's a great question. I think being intentional with your pursuit of God and then um, learning about what marriage is, because if you don't know what it is, you might abuse it. Like what is, what is the word of abuse? If you don't know what it is, you misuse it. And so for me before I knew what I desired, but I didn't. I didn't know too much about it. So I would ask you, um, you, I would sit with others who have been where I want to go and gain wisdom from them and listen to them and seek out books to read and prayerfully ask God, please show me what does it mean to be a wife? There's a scripture I, I read in Proverbs, um, I think it's 31, where it said in the beginning, she does him good and not evil all the days of her life and i thought oh all i mean you don't get you're not born and then you get married so that means before i even meet him i do him good mm. i'm intentional about you know being a wife i want to learn what it means so i would do that i would seek out couples i would ask questions i would um babysit for married couples I would invest on the study, on the study them. <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. I wanted to invest in where I wanted to go because mm. I, I didn't know much about it. So I thought, you know, while I'm waiting, God, teach me what it means to be a wife so I can prepare for what I'm praying for. So for me, that was very important. I hope, 
you know, as you're waiting, you know, God has a purpose in the wait. He's preparing you. He's preparing that person. So don't waste that waiting season. Use it to build yourself. Yeah. Use it to build yourself. Thank you so much, Simi. I know that if I was have this conversation the way I want to, we'll spend more than one hour. I shared on my page during the week uh, one of the um, one of the quotes by I think it's Abraham Lincoln, and he says uh, the best way to predict your future is to design it. Mm. So you knew who you wanted to end up with. You knew you wanted to end up with a man of faith, a man of God, someone who loved God like you do, uh, and you also knew that. Um, who you wanted to be in that relationship. So I hear your response. You're saying to us, we also must be very conscious of who we want to be in the relationship. Thank you very much. We have to go quickly to money now because <laughs> the time is going. Yes, I already talked about financial freedom. I, I just want to ask you, what, what do you think, what does it mean to you? What does financial freedom mean to you? It doesn't matter if it means what I said earlier, but what does financial freedom mean to you? Hmm. Financial freedom, uh... It means, you know, I over the last, you know, couple years, I've been meditating on the scripture that godliness with contentment is great gain. Um, and so for me, financial freedom means just being at peace and content with what God has provided for me. And so it's it's like a you, there's another scripture that says, you know, God, don't give me too much that I forget you. Mm. or too little that I curse you. Mm. And so for me, it's a freedom in Christ to know that everything I have, he has, he provides for me. I don't, I'm not, you know, trying to get what he has not given. And I'm not being a bad steward of what he has given me. I know it's, it's like this tension for me. It's like a freedom in him to know I can be all that I can be. I can have all that he has designed for me to have, but I don't want finances to have me, if that makes sense. I want to have finances, but I don't want it to have me, if that makes sense. That's just it. You've said it. He's on it. You don't want the finances or money to become your small G-O-D. Yeah. You want to be in control. Excellent. Um, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, well, one of the reasons why this community exists is to help people not to make money mistakes. Uh, you know, so... We try to teach ourselves what we should avoid and what you know we should focus on, so that uh, and if we make mistakes, we want to make the mistakes early in life, not when we're too, already retiring and it's too difficult to rebuild or begin to recreate wealth that um, some kind of error has um, dealt with. Uh, are you? Would you like to share with us some common financial mistakes that you see people making? and how to avoid them. You may choose to focus from, you know, the Christian point of view, if you like, sure. you know, generally. Um, I think, I mean, especially in this world, like social media and, you know, you see what you see, people want to compare and they want to be like the Joneses, you know, that's what we say here. I don't know if the same, the same saying in Nigeria, like you're trying to, uh, th there's a perception of wealth and then there's what you are. And I feel like there's such a great divide with that, especially in the West. It's so easy to fake it. You know, you can get credit cards. You can rack up debt. Nobody knows. Like, ha, you're driving this nice car, leaving this nice house. Meanwhile, you can't really afford it. It's really on credit. So I feel like one of the biggest mistakes people make is not is living too much on credit okay. and, and not on what they have. Even if it's not as big as someone else, I think it's important to to know your means. And it's okay to grow and aspire to that, but don't don't break your back because someone posted, you know, on their social and you're like, hi, I don't have this nice kitchen, you know, I let me go into debt because I want what someone else has. So I think that's a big mistake people make is comparison. Um you are where you are for a reason, you know, people have, have gone through things, people who do genuinely have wealth have gone through uh, the work, have, have, have done the work to get where they are. And then you just want to get there in like two seconds. And so I think that's a big I, mistake. Microwave wealth. <laughs> they want the wealth within the microwave time. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much. Don't follow the Joneses. And you no. know, it's, um, it's not only the social media world uh, for, for us in Nigeria, 
there's a lot of pressure because, you know, party wise, and there's this Ashoy B concept, somebody may be having a party and the Ashoy B will cost like a uh, hundred thousand, which is almost, you know, like 20% of your salary. And you want to do it because you want to belong. Uh, increasingly, I'm, uh, I see uh, very wealthy people, extremely wealthy people. I know two wealthy people. I don't know if they're around the call, very, very wealthy, but there's nothing you will do that will make them subscribe to the Ashoy B. And these are people who support, you know, missionaries and other mm. useful ventures, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. so competition, unnecessary competition. I mean, we all have different faces. And the funny thing is that, uh, you know, people forget easily. If you go to a party now, and by the time you get home, it will be very unlikely that you can remember what, you know, 50% of the people were. So the pressures, yeah. I hear you, is one of the mistakes and people must avoid such. And then in the Western world, the social media craze, people are living on credit, but yet it's putting a lot of pressure on others. So we must avoid such mistakes. And we must also avoid not, uh, uh, you know, uh, being overwhelmed with credit. Credit is good if you use it responsibly, you can use it to grow well, but it must be used responsibly. Thank you for sharing that, Simi. Uh, now, uh, do you, I know you and your husband are both, you're both Christians, you're good uh, examples of children of God, uh, but I want you to share with us, um, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to answer it, uh, but it's something that comes up when I teach about finance and relationships. So do you do project accounts? Do you do joint accounts? Do you do, uh, what's your approach to finances? And if it's too private, please we'll drop it. I'll go to the next question. Or let oh, me no. know if you make it about yourself. Simi, no, don't make it about yourself. So please do answer. What do you think about joint accounts? And what do you think are the benefits or the merits in relationships? Please don't oh, sure. an example, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't mind because I think we learn from each other. So um, my husband and I, we we do believe in joint accounts. Um, now, I believe that everyone has a different uh, money personality. So when you get married and become one, it's good to know each other in that way. We're different in our money personalities. You know, my husband is more the investor, go, go, go. I'm the saver, the planner. Like, I'm like, what? I need to know every number. Um, so I think what we figured out is God put us together for a reason so we can work together. Mm. So we we believe in joint accounts. Um, and, I, you know, there has to be a level, level of, of trust, of course. You know, every yes. relationship, you have to do what's best for you and what works for your home. So for us, that's what works. Um, I do believe in transparency and... Um, just laying it all out, you know, Absolutely. especially when you okay. begin a relationship, say, tell everything, don't hide anything. Don't wait till like year four, like, oh, by the way, <laughs> I forgot to mention. Um, Cause to me, that will just break trust. It's like good or bad. We just told each other everything. Your strengths everything and your, your money strengths and your weaknesses. Yes. Thank you for using the word trust. I think that's what the young people around the call, you know, need to focus on trust. And it also goes back to the intentionality. When you're hoping to end up with somebody, it has to be somebody that you can trust. Exactly. Somebody that you can close your eyes and be sure that he or she can take a right decision that will favor you both. Thank you so much. Quickly, what are you teaching your lovely sons about money? <laughs> Simi has three beautiful sons. Well, oh. Simi alone, Pastor Sam and Simi, they have three lovely sons. What are you teaching them? Yes, we. Money. you know, it's actually kind of, it's fun because... Um, you know, at this age, I don't know, growing up, you know, when I saw my parents growing up, we didn't really talk too much about it. You just knew they had it and they provided for you. <laughs> I, it's just, you didn't know where it came from. But with our kids, we're very intentional about teaching them about what is money and how to grow it, what to give. They each have their own accounts. Um, so we'll show them like, this is your name. This is the money you have. Um, we teach them about giving, giving to God, saving, just little things. Like as the conversations come up, they'll say, mommy, like, what is this? How much does this cost? If we go out to eat, we'll, we'll ask them, how much do you think this is? Have them like calculate so they understand the value, value. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of things. So that's very important to us. And um, our um, middle son is, we can see he's very, uh, entrepreneurial like he inclined it just seems he's very fascinated by it learning about investments and 
and supply and demand. He'll he'll talk about it like excitedly. So How it's old like is he? okay. How old is he? Eight. He's eight. eight. But he started this when he was younger, like seven. He started his own business. He decided he wanted to start a store. He came up with the name all by himself. It's called TBM. Toys, books, and more. Mm -hmm. He had a poster. And me, I'm sitting there like, okay, that's nice. Okay. But then you can see he's serious. We're like, okay, let's set this up. Dad went, got a table. We set this up in front of our house. He had different toys, books, lemonade. Um, and the first day, it was like, I think it was like a God wink because one person bought one thing and then gave him $40 on top of it. Um, oh. and the funny thing oh. is, he had just, he had, um, he had gotten some pocket money and he said to me, he wanted to give God $20 or so. And I said to my, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, <laughs> you want to tell them, wait, that's a lot. Like, and then I just felt Holy Spirit say, uh-uh, leave him. Like, that's what he wants to give me. <sighs> Don't stop so him. He gives <laughs> 20 in church. That week is when he started his business. God just gave him 40. Like, I was like, okay. God, you're teaching me that you know uh, what you're doing. Like, it's not just about keeping all the money. It's giving to him. It's about building your business. And so he's taking it online this year. Um, this summer, he said, I want to take it online, mom. I want to reach more people. <laughs> so now we, you know, we have our own business too. So I think modeling it for them. My husband is a soccer coach. He's a soccer professional for a university and he has his own business as well. And so um, under Heroes Football Club is TBM. Mm. So he's, he's selling his own thing. So that's just a that's, bit of what we do for our kids. You, you don't know what you've just uh, done, Simi. You've just, um, what you've just said is very, very profound. It's very important to teach our children about the value of money. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I like you are very transparent. You know, you you grew up in a very comfortable home, so everything was there. But you know, you, you didn't you didn't know what you are not teaching your children. They need to understand it's not just dropping from the, the sky <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> you know, so it's very important when you teach your children that way. They become uh, more responsible financially. They begin to understand financial education. You can see his interest already, and so. Uh, they get to financial freedom with ease and and more readily than mm -hmm. people who didn't grow up understanding financial education or the intricacies of financial fitness. So that's it. And so for parents around the call uh, who still have children that they can model or that they can coach into understanding the value of money, it's important. And if you see your any of your children having traits, business uh, acumen traits and all of that, sit them down, help them develop um, the skills or their passion for, for growing wealth at an early age. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, uh, I'm going to come and share comments um, very soon from the comment box. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Pastor Sam. Uh, Proverbs 26, verse 6, start the children up on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not depart. They will not turn from it. Another mm -hmm. translation says, train up a child. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to come to those comments later. Um, Simi, I want to go to Korea. Um, you are one of the few uh, people that I know who started off on a very good career very early in life. Uh, you've been doing so well career-wise and able to hold down you know, your home, your beautiful home, raising beautiful children. How do you balance professional responsibilities with your, um, you know, the, the chores of raising uh, three sons and being the wife to an African man, <laughs> an African pastor? So far away from home where you know what I mean the domestic support and all of that yeah, yeah. Really how 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 do you balance it oh God's grace that's a great time for see me yeah God's grace you know I I'll admit it has not been easy um you know as I'm raising my kids I'm thinking ha huh, how did I end up in the west so like where's where's the help like where's the driver like you're looking for all the things you where are the nannies where's the nanny like in my mind, I, I literally was talking to God, like, wait, what's going on here, Lord? Like, surely you want me to drop one thing and focus on the other. But he said, no, like my grace is sufficient, sufficient for, for you. you. Yeah. So 
really that's been it's his grace and when you have a partner and a husband that is also just so sensitive pardon understanding understanding thank you and helpful like he helps he doesn't just you know you know leave me to it he's it's like a partnership it he we support each other where he can like he gets in he does dishes he does laundry i know in nigeria it'd be like that's that wouldn't be done i mean you would have help but living here we understand that we are in this together it's teamwork so we help each other um we have a community of of in church you we belong to a good community that we can call on so it's not a thing where it's oh i do it all on my own i'm superwoman and i am not i you're I surrounded rely. by grace and help yes yes daily on on the grace of god and it's like there there's seasons of things you know where one is more uh heavy than the other like you know i didn't i didn't travel as much when my kids are younger um before when we first got married i was traveling i was i was out more but you know when you start raising young kids it's like okay thankfully That's i have a job that has that understands that the priority my priority is family so God has just been gracious to kind of balance things where I can also work from home. You know, a lot of times I'm working at night, midnight, <laughs> when the kids are in bed, um, or, you know, you're cooking and it's, you know, you just try to make it work. I think it's not, um, there's no, it's formula. not about being a superwoman. I see no. you, um, you know, referencing grace, and you know the power and intervention of God in every aspect of your life. And uh, to be honest, I think this interview with you is about the second one. I did one interview once uh, for the Rehoboth Foundation, and I was so awed by you know the gentleman speaking about his faith. He put out his faith out there uh, in every response. And everyone around the call, we're going to be releasing the edition of uh, the Thinking Aloud magazine with that interview very soon. It's something you all want to read about. Thank you so much, Simi. Uh, it also goes back to who you marry and who you end up with. And um, I can assure you that if you were based in Nigeria uh, and uh, you didn't have the domestic support you should have, your African prince, uh, Pastor Sam, will still be as nice. So it's not a matter of where he is. So uh, I can say that for him. I don't, know. I don't know what you want to say, but I can say that about him. <laughs> He's a good one. <laughs> Now, quickly, you are raising what we call Generation Alpha children. Generation Alpha children are children born after 2010. They are children born right into the social media, the techie world, and all of that. You're raising them in America. Uh, America offers a lot of freedom in many respects. You know, uh, it wouldn't happen to you, but they, you know, children go to school and they come back and they're talking about confusion of their genders and all of that. They go to school, they come back. They're not they're questioning the existence of God, you know, and all of that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I will, will give you all the examples. So what are your key principles? Uh, what are the principles that guide your family values? And how are you, and, you know, Pastor Sam, doing this? In this very difficult, uh, if you know what I mean, world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, that's something I talk about um, even in my second book. I want to be my mommy when I grow up. I think in this society we live in, it's... It's scary. I mean, there's so many, you know, you hear of shootings, they're teaching this, they're teaching that. And, but the Holy Spirit would always tell us like, you know, they're born for such a time as this. It's not an accident where they are. And then I chose them to be born where they are with you. So it's our responsibility to, to give them Jesus. Like we don't wait for everyone else to teach them. To from confuse them. Home. Okay. Exactly. Prayer. Okay. Okay. We uh we study the word together. Family devotions is very important. Okay. We okay. we go through the word. We teach them. We we're open about talk about everything. You know, this is who you are. God made you male for a reason. You know, and we we're just open. You have to be. We don't wait for the other mistakes. people to teach them who they mm. are. We okay. We, we instill it in them, um, as best as we can, mm. uh, with what God has given us. So that's mm. really important to us. Yeah, excellent. And then you support them with uh, with uh, prayers. Absolutely, yes. 
Thank you so much. I wanted to bring that out uh, because some of my friends around the call have joined us from Canada. Um, you know, those, some of those joining from Nigeria, who knows where they will end up with their families. So it's important to understand how to deal with this. So if you teach your yeah. children, and it goes back to what uh, Pastor Sam said. Uh, you yeah. start the children off, you know, in the way they should go. And when they are old, they won't turn from it. So you teach them from home uh, and explain to them, you know, the, this, the difficulties out there and who they are in Christ. Thank you so much. I want to go to, uh, I have two more questions for you before I go to the chat box. Um, I want to talk about black tax. Have you heard the word black tax before? I have, yes. I've heard the word black tax. Okay. Um, I want to ask you what you, how do you handle black tax? And maybe just for my friends around the call, uh, uh, black tax refers to uh, when you have financial obligation by professionals uh, to support their less fortunate uh, family members of less fortunate members of their families. So like, uh, it's, it's very common in Africa. You send a child to school uh, or a relative to school, and then the parents expect you to, uh, you know, repay all that, or the family expects you to, to repay that. So it's mostly, it's, it refers to um, when professionals are expected to give back uh, to less privileged members of the families. So the question for you, uh, Simi, is how do you handle black tax? And what, do you, what would you recommend as a good strategy uh, for this? You want to balance having finances for your immediate nuclear family, but you know this is something that is, I know you're far away from home, but you're still an African. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for sure. To whom much is given, much is required. So I think that's really just the heart of it. Like we know you know, God didn't put us in this position so we can just enjoy ourselves. Each alone. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes so we have you know family in nigeria um you know a lot of um you know nieces nephews um just having that balance you know to know like god has given us so we can help as best as we can it's not like we're like we're not a cash cow where they say it's just Give me money and you're bingo. not an ATM card. That's how we no. say it in Nigeria. We're not ATM card. <laughs> Literally. So it's like the same God I'm praying to, you pray. Like, let's just have that understanding. But it is the thing of, you know, where it says teach people how to fish. Um, you talk, you want to talk ideas. What can we do? Um, but obviously, people who are younger, growing growing um, growing up in school, you want to help them. Um with opportunities and things like that. But we we, we want to build that, changing that mindset of it's not just, um, you know, you wait for someone to give to you, but think of your ideas. And as we can help, we do as best as we can. Yeah. So we definitely, I think that's important. To yeah. Me. Thank you very much, Simeon. I think what we're taking away is just what you've said. And Joshua, thank you so much. One of these days, Joshua, you're going to host this program with me. I see. He's just hitting, you know, putting all the comments there. And thank you very much for saying it. To, to whom much is given, much is expected. Uh, and you don't know how much, you, you know, encouragement that is to people around the call because there's so many people who are also in privileged positions. And, you know, sometimes the weight of the requests from, you know, dependents, even, you know, people in the social circles and all of that uh, becomes a big weighty, a, li a little bit weighty. But listening to you, is a reminder that indeed God put you in this position so you can also help others. Exactly. Thank you so much. My last question before I go to um, the comments um, section, uh, it's similar to the black tax, but it's just, you know, black tax is related to family. Uh, but I want to ask you about uh, philanthropy, you know, helping others and financing the church. Uh, speak to us, you know, feel free to speak to us about philanthropy. Uh, uh, financing the church and helping others. Absolutely. Yes. I see I see my husband that says here, we believe in honoring our parents and giving financially. But at the same time, remind family we cannot be their source. God has to be the Alpha and Omega. Yeah, and Omega. That's, that's... Indeed. That, that reminds me of what a friend said to me once. I said, you can't be God in people's lives. That's you good. cannot be the big G-O-D or be yeah. the small G-O-D because when they can't look up to God anymore, and they look up to you, then you've you replaced the big G.O.D. in their lives as a small G.O.D. Thank you, That's Pastor it. Sam. <laughs>
Yes. So um, to answer your question, oh, yes, philanthropy is huge in our hearts. I know when I first met Sam, his first um, one of the first things he said to me is that he he wants to be a missionary. His heart is to, uh, you know, help others and to go out into the world. Like God says, to um, spread the gospel and share the love of Christ in any way that we can. And so that's huge. That's very big for us that we sow into the lives of others um, into ministries, into missions, um, to go where we can't go. You know, a lot of times you want to do so many things, but you can't go. But if you, if you give towards it, it's like you went as well. So we are definitely huge in that. There's so much need in the world. And I know sometimes it's overwhelming. You're like, God, what can I do? Just something. You don't have to fix every problem, but just do something like, no, it's not just about you. Um, so for us, that's very big, whether you have a lot or a little, don't feel like, oh, well, I'll wait till I'm, you know, so rich, then I'll, then I'll start giving, you know, they say that actually the people who give the most are those with the least funny enough. Um, so, and whatever means you can, whether it's helping your neighbor or cooking a meal for someone or, you know, donating something, do it. It's, it's so fulfilling for us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Simi. There's a question from Hassan Lawal. Uh, I don't know if this question is for Simi, but I'm going to ask it all the same. And he says, how, how do I stay financially independent as a medical student and also stay in the faith? So um, the question is, how do I stay financially independent as a medical student and also stay in the faith? Uh, let me moderate it, Simi. How okay. can every one of us around the call pursue money, pursue world creation, and still stay in the faith? I think you answered it somewhat, you know, with the past question, but please try with this one again. How can you, um, pursue, how can you pursue, pursue your, your career and still stay in the faith? Is that the question? Well, finances. How do you pursue money? He says, how do I stay financially independent? But I want to generalize because it's not only about okay. the medical students. It's oh. every one of us around the court probably has this question, depending on the stage of life that we're at. How can we, we say we want to grow money, but we still want to remain in the faith. What should be the oh. guiding principle? Oh, absolutely. I don't feel like they should be separated. Like we know that the love of money is the root of evil, but the Bible also says money answereth all. So I feel as though if God owns a, the cattle on a thousand hills, he, he is wealth. He, he created it. Like, so in pursuing him, I think he gives us, the Bible says that God gives us the ability to produce wealth. So he's given you the ability in pursuing your degree or your business to go and be a good steward of it, to multiply it, to, um, to expand it. So it's, don't feel like if you're pursuing generating more wealth that you're somehow Even abandoning the faith. No, you're, you're doing what he says, work hard. If you don't work, you don't eat. Like, um, it's, I think it's synonymous. So I feel, but you know, we just don't make it our God. Like, Oh, I love it so much. This is my life. Like everything I do is geared toward money. No, you're, you're being a good steward of the talents and the resources God has given you. Um, and you want to have, the wealth or the money so that you can help solve problems in so many, you know, so many people have, have, uh, uh, problems that can be solved through creating wealth. So I feel like we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't separate it. I don't know if that answers. The yeah, you did. You answered it so well. In addition to what you said earlier on, you cannot separate faith and, um, green wealth. Um, as you pursue your faith and your belief and your trust in God, you also, uh, try to create wealth on the side. But you did say something earlier on when you said you want to have money, you want to grow wealth, but you don't want the money to become your God. You don't want money to own you and be in control of you. Um, so to answer Hassan, uh, the principles that faith, the principles of faith that we are being taught, contentment, integrity as we chase the money, and then like you said earlier on, Simi, the money must not become our God. Uh, so uh, you can pursue financial uh, independence, financial freedom, even as a medical student, and not give up on your faith. Uh, you just have to remember when you're choosing, 
when opportunities are coming your way and uh, to remember that everything you do must glorify God. Uh, I think Simi said at the beginning that everything about her, every step, everything, she, she's, her life and her relationship with Christ is not just at home. Maybe when she's wife to Pastor Sam, it's everywhere in her career as she brings up her children and as she relates to people in the society. Thank you very much. I wanted to see if... Um, Okay, see me. Uh, and th thank you, sir. Thank you, Commander Nesema, for joining us. Yes, he says, does not having joint account with, <laughs> with one spouse create trust issues? I'm going to allow Pastor Sam to talk. I think he can talk. Actually. Yes, see me. There's a question from Commander Nesema, and he says, having joint accounts with one spouse, doesn't it create trust issues? No. Oh, it doesn't create it doesn't... <laughs> no <laughs> um and i don't see if you have the a, a joint account that for me that's a building you're building trust with each other it doesn't create an issue unless there was an issue there before oh. the account was created yeah i mean that's it might almost... reveal the issue it doesn't mm -hmm. create it so i think it I th it might reveal that, that there's reveal, an issue. Reveal, okay. It doesn't create the issue. It doesn't That's, create the issue, yeah? Yeah, I think, um, and if, if it's something that you um, have to work through, that's okay. Like, don't feel like, okay, we have some things that we need to work through and grow through. You know, I feel like the process of when you get married, becoming one, it doesn't just happen that when you say I do, it's a process of becoming one. So if you have to build through and work through those things i think that's okay but but having a joint account does not in my opinion does not create does not create trust issues okay yeah pastor sam you know. want to say something thank you very much simi i just want to hear from your your second or is it better how how do they say it yes thank you, us, pastor sam. <laughs> thank you thank you man for having me uh, i'm babysitting the boys so unfortunately i won't turn my camera no don't um, worry about your camera <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that is a very, I've seen uh, beautiful homes and marriages get uh, destroyed uh, due to this topic, uh, f finance that we're talking about. Uh, for me, I think it's, uh, it's important to, to know each other as an uh, area of strength and weakness. Uh, for me, growing up in Africa, I, I had a father that controlled everything. And then my mom was a better manager and planner than my father. But because he did not have an example that, listen, area, it's okay to submit the area that you are weak in to your spouse. Forget about she's a woman. Forget all those things. So for me, I, 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 I knew that if, I, if we don't have a joint account and I submit that area of our lives and our marriage and our home to her, our, our finances will be a mess because I'm the kind of go-go guy. If I can see somebody on the road that does not have money and shoes and give them all the money I have and my shoes and then forget that, listen, I need to wear shoe home so I don't even get nail or something on my head. Yeah, so I think it depends on the, the couples. Now, if you are somebody that have trust issue, it's good to get counseling, you know? But again, also... I think it's also important to know the person you are marrying. You know, so a lot of times when people start dating, they don't spend time to even get to know who they are going to, who they are marrying, what is their area of strength. People so much focus on the flowers, the deeds, the deeds that they don't. Like for instance, when we when we're dating, I remember she asking me questions like questions like, uh, "What is your good, bad, and ugly?" I say, "Oh my goodness." Oh my goodness. So, but I believe the reason why she was asking was because she wanted to know my area of strength. What am I good at? You know, yeah. So, to answer your question, Ma, uh, we have a joint account because we both uh, know our weaknesses. We both know uh, we, have, we have trust. 
And most importantly, our individual pursuit of God. I, I used to tell my wife, I said, listen, I know a lot of Nigerians don't have reputation when it comes to money. So don't even worry if I'm going to steal money and ever run. That I'm more afraid of dishonoring and, and sinning against God mm. than even sinning against you. Mm. So, so the area of money is money is the, she knows me. Money is the least thing I worry about. Now, do I work hard? Oh yes. Do I want to give my children, family, and loved ones a more comfortable lifestyle? Oh yes. But money will money does not take the place of God in our lives. Money is our servant. Money is not our Lord. Mm. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, Pastor Sam. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to have to do one You're session welcome. about relationships with you and Simi. Uh, Commander Nesiana, thank you for joining us, sir. You have been allowed to speak. All right. Thank you very much, my So much a pleasure sitting to listen to you and uh, Simi and every other person on, on, on this call. Uh, my question actually, I think, was not properly captured. Ah. What I said was, does it... Uh, does not having a joint account oh. does it create um, what's called trust trust, trust issues? issues? That's the question. So okay. get joint uh, having definitely. If you don't have um, if you don't have trust your partner, you might not want to have a joint account. Okay. But not having one. Okay. For example, I, won't, I don't know if my wife is on this call and it's my children and what have you. So after this thing, and they say, okay, now look, um, we have not had enough joint, we have joint accounts in certain areas, but we still have our individual accounts. Okay. So um, I'm now talking about, especially mommy has been talking about um, young people thinking about marriage and all those stuff. It's not just for those of us that have been married for close to 30 years. Now, for such people, when they are cutting or dating, they might this question might pop up. I say, yeah. look, what do you think about joint accounts? Then yeah. the one of them says, no, I don't uh, believe in it. Does that cost trust issues? Can that be the beginning of uh, them having issues? That's we are actually. That's your, that's thank your you. question. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I think it's a different question from what we dealt with. But the question we talked about was also uh, important. Simi, you want to take a go at this? Sure. I, you know, I had mentioned earlier that I think it depends on the couple and um, that every relationship, you can't just like put a, okay, because they do this, we're going to do this. Because it works for them, it's going to work for us. I think it depends on the reason why you have separate accounts. Um, if there is a, a level of hiding something, um, you don't want the other one to know, um, then th that's another issue. So the reason is important because it may be like, for example, Sam and I have, we've set up, um, different businesses and it's in different, in our, our names. So with heroes, it's in his name, although I'm, you know, I, I help him in every way. Mm -hmm. I have access to it. It's in his name. So it's not a thing of, oh, it's yours. Because we believe what's mine is his and what's his is mine. There might be uh, reasons that you have different accounts for purposes. Or even when you're doing taxes and different things, we have access to each other's accounts, whether we're joint on it or not. I don't know if that's, I don't think that's the do or die. Like you have to but I think the knowledge of, okay, we know what each other has, we trust each other um, and the purpose of it. So I, I don't know if that really answers the question. Yeah, I, I, I don't, think I don't... it does. It does speak yeah. to one aspect of it. Uh, Pastor Sam, you want to say something? Yeah, just to add to it, I think uh, uh, I, I think I understand what uh, the gentleman that was speaking uh, just said. Um, if you like my wife said, what works for one cannot work for the other. Um, times have really changed. There are things that worked for our parents that some of those things will work for us and some will not. 
uh, with this generation, I, I think I heard him say, okay, what about if they are dating and that question comes up? Um, I, I think it's a good conversation, not only for them to have within themselves, but also to have people in their lives that know them also to sit down with them. Because if you're planning to do life together, I am somebody who believes that if you are going into marriage for life and you believe it's God's will and it's not just for a while because mm -hmm. of how they do it in the Western world, it is something that you need to get counsel from professionals about. So let's say it may not even happen at the beginning because when you're dating, you don't really know each other. When your first one, two years of marriage, you still you're still learning each other, you know. So maybe you can start by having separate account, but at the same time know what each other is making. So for instance, my wife and I, even though we have a joint account, we also decided that okay, we we'll still have our own spending account. So she has her own account. Anytime she wants to go to shopping, if you want to go to shopping, you want to check what you have inside that account. You know, so uh, um, uh, it's not, we're not saying um, every couple should do it, but there's a level of trust that a maturity uh, and self-control that if both of you have, I think uh, it can help to build a, um, you know, um, a level of trust. So it depends again on the in individuals, yeah. uh, definitely depend on the in individual, but anything that has to do with money, <laughs> Please, please, yeah. I will still say counseling. I, I like what Mr. Yeah, I like what Mr. Joshua says. That's where finance coach BK comes in. That's a good one. Oh, Joshua. <laughs> I've told <laughs> you he's gonna, he's gonna host one of these sessions with me very soon. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Simi, Pastor Sam, everyone that's you know that's commented. I mean, the, the chat box has been very, very fairy. It's been very uh, interactive. Um, but I think I would I would be unfair, you know, my timekeepers have already called me to warn me. Uh, I would like you to take this call, and that's because I have uh, Pastor Sam and yourselves both uh, ministers around the call. I mean, on this call, I also have other ministers around the call. Uh, but someone says, I lost a few thousands to a Ponzi scheme that looked mm -hmm. promising at first. It was a foolish attempt, but then the mistake is made and the lesson learned. But I have not recovered from the loss. How do I get over it? How do I get over the emotional attachment of losing? I wanted to speak to that quickly. And that's because, and I, and I don't know how this person is still losing money being a member of this community. We teach ourselves all the time about Ponzi schemes. Anyway, please help me speak to this. How can he or she get out of the emotional um, attachment? I mean, the, dis the disruption to themselves of losing money. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a that's a big one. It's 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 painful. I don't know anyone who's lost money who's been happy about it. Uh, so I think it's okay to acknowledge that. Yeah, this happened, and it's it's detrimental and it's hard, and work through it. But I think what's more important is what do you do afterwards, because it happened once. You don't want it to now define your financial future, cause you to uh be afraid of ever investing money um know what what like of course having a coach i think financial coach is good um to know what to look out for what is you know you can you can educate yourself on these kind of schemes and how not to fall into that trap again and how to really secure yourself when you want to make an investment. So I think it's, you know, acknowledge the pain, go through it. It's it's hard, but don't let it define your future. Money can always be made. You know, there's a there's a proverb that says don't don't look too much at money because it can it just flies away like a bird. Money comes and money goes. So don't don't hold your whole future in what you lost as much as it may be. You can gain even more in the future, but don't get stuck in in the loss and just learn from it. I think a lot of what we we know in in our financial journey is we learn from our mistakes and we try not to repeat them. We try to grow. So we, we're all we can all say that we've made mistakes, but we can grow from it and don't get stuck in that mistake. That's my take on it. Thank you very much. I mean, Pastor Sam, you, you will have a final word on this, maybe from Yeah, I, I will I will speak 
from experience. Uh, I think about 15 or 18 years ago, I, I fell into that category as well. And uh, first of all, let me just, if you're, if you're listening, like my wife said, it is very, very painful. When you work so hard to make money and, you know, heartless and greed, people with greed will do that soft stuff to you. It's very painful. So please accept our, our, our sympathy, right? Um, now, speaking from experience, right? When that happened to me about 18 years ago, to be honest, I, I come from a family of 10 kids and I'm the last child. So uh, my, my family didn't have a lot. So as a young teenager then, coming from, uh, no, young adult, I just turned 18, I wanted to make quick money so I can get all my family from poverty. I thought I could be the Jesus and the Lord of saving everybody. Um, so when that opportunity, when that conversation happened with me online, it, it looked so genuine that, to be honest, I didn't get counseling. I just jumped into. But after I lost that money, um, I, I, it, was, it, it took me a, a while. It took me a while to get over it. And also one of the things that, was, things that also helped me get over it is uh, talking to people that are more experienced and 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 are good with money and investment. I I remember sharing this with one of my pastor, and he laughed. And then after laughing, he he shared a scripture with me that never left me. I think from Isaiah, he said uh, the scripture. Uh, I think in Isaiah, there's, there's a verse that says, "Who he that believeth does not make haste." So one thing I one thing I discover about these people that do Yahoo Yahoo money is. Whenever they want something from you, they they try to press any kind of button. They, there's so much in a hurry. Oh, send this, send this. If you don't do this now, you will miss out. If you miss out, so even though as you, uh, it might still take a while, but the lessons are important. Listen, the God that gave you that strength, that wisdom to make that money, that God is still alive, and that God can, that God can do exceedingly abundantly far above what you've even lost. So just trust him again and then learn all the lessons that you can and 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 you know uh, and the future will be brighter than it is right now. Thank you so very much Pastor Sam. Thank you everybody. Um I'm not going to call the person's name for you know it was deliberate I have their name but um I don't want to call call out the person. Please get in touch with me and we can speak about this and there's some comments also from uh uh, Gabriel Ogule, uh, Ponzi schemes always look genuine. They build trust to weaken one's guard and then the strike. Um, we can't overemphasize the opportunities that you have been a member of this community. I always say if I don't know something, I know people who know it. Uh, I might not be able to give you tax um, you know, experts uh, advice or maybe legal advice, but I have people I can reach out to. So don't hesitate. I always put it online. Just send a DM, you know, and we'll be able to get around. I know people who have uh, tried to invest in very funny things. They've come to me and I've done, I'm not part of this. I don't know anything. And I, there have been some members of this community who have come and asked about genuine investment opportunities. And I say, oh, I can beat my chest about this. Please go ahead. And that's why you have uh, coaches and mentors around. And I say, especially for those of us that you know go to church, we have a lot of resources. We have plenty of resources in the churches. People are ready to help. It's not every finance coach that is billing for this. And so don't, you shouldn't be making mistakes by being a part of this community. That's what I want to say. Uh, thank you very much. I'm so grateful to all the senior friends that have joined us this evening. Uh, Mrs. Kosoko, I see you online. Thank you for joining us. Commander Nesema, thank you very much. Uh, I know you, I know whose guest you are, but I'm happy to have you around the call. Bosse Ogule, thank you. You were part of this. Um, last week. I don't know if this is Pastor BC, but thank you. I see one BC online. Thank you for joining. I see a Charles. I don't know who you are. Thank you, sir, for joining. Uh, there's Charles Freeman. Thank you, sir. And I see Papa on the call. Thank you, sir, for joining. Uh, I, my timekeepers are on my case. I wanted you to say something. Or okay. should I even let you say something? Anyway, thank you, Papa D. And Papa D is uh, Simi and Pastor Sam's father. Uh, Sister Eruni, thank you very much. Mrs. Farms, she was our guest, one of our guests last week. 
uh, Gabriel Ogule has started this platform with me and he's been a constant, a constant member of the community. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, there's Benga, I don't know if it's uh, Mr. Farms, but thank you for joining. Gideon, we have a lot to talk about. Please DM me. Uh, Hassan Lawa, I wish you good luck in your medical school iPhone 1, iPhone 2. You know, see me, when big people join programs like this, they appear as iPhone 1, iPhone 2. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Ma, for joining. Joshua, thank you so much. And Madam Kemio Sharode, thank you so much. She's joining from Aberdeen. Thank you so very much. I don't know if this is Kule that was with us last week uh, from New Jersey. Thank you. McDonald Cookie, these are my permanent friends. Thank you. Mrs. Kenechi. Thank you for joining. Uh, is this Uncle Onjefo? I don't know if it's Dr. Onjefo or the officer. Thank you, sir, for joining. Uh, Mr. Onu Emmanuel, Roymeka Osadebe, thank you. Rolly Shola, Mrs. Kosoko, Dr. T, Pastor Wanajo, and Zoom user. Thank you all so much. I've been chasing Simi for Yes, to try and get her around this call. Um, and I'm so grateful that we finally were able to get the time to do this together. Thank you so much, Simi. And thank you, Pastor Sam, for babysitting for her. The, mm -hmm. I'm going to share some of the comments and on my page, uh, my pages online in the next few days. So many lessons. And I thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Oh.